Hey there, English speakers. Jesse here from Smooth Academy. And thank you for coming with me. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And thank you for coming back. Uh, first of all, I apologize for not uploading very regularly recently. I've been working on other projects and other parts of my projects. A lot of interesting things. I do have a fluency challenge. I've been doing with some students in my More Than English Facebook group. You are welcome to join me in that. The Just type More Than English into Facebook. But enough of that. Welcome back. If you're a fan of my Spanish with Giri uh, lessons, then I'm going to hopefully get one of those up this week too. So keep uh, posted for that. But welcome back. Today we have a reaction video. As you saw in the title, in the description, we're looking at a conversation between Joe Rogan, probably the most famous podcaster in, in podcasting today. If you want to build connections with, with people in the United States, in the UK, chances are they listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. So learning English with this is a great way to incorporate yourself into, into conversations and to be involved in conversations and understand references. So uh, with that, today we're looking at um, magician, hypnotist, uh, speaker Darren Brown. And I want you to be able to listen to a British accent in Darren Brown and Joe Rogan's American accent, right? So you're going to get a conversation. We're going to listen to a little bit of a conversation about, well, Darren Brown explains hypnosis, hypnotizing people, the method, a little bit of how he does it. So if you like that sort of thing, then you're going to love this conversation. I'm going to break down the language. We're going to watch a small part of the conversation. I'm going to break down the language to help you learn and to help you pick out the parts that will make you a better English speaker. I'm going to put the, this clip in the description box below. And while you're down there, if you haven't yet, hit subscribe and the bell so you can get a lesson every time I upload. Uh, I'm trying to get to a thousand. I'm the best English speaking YouTuber under a thousand subscribers, but let's change that. Okay, let's get into Joe Rogan's conversation with Dan, Dan <laughs> Darren Brown about hypnosis, shall we? In which case I have to filter out anybody playing along, but occasionally, occasionally it doesn't matter. Like a lot of the time, like I'll get people up on stage and I'll shake their hand and there's a rapid handshake induction that the guy just, you know, just falls to the floor. Um, and there are times that that matters and they have to be, that has to be a really honest response. Other times I can tell they're sort of half into it and they're just a bit intimidated. And But for the 2,000 people looking, that might look, it kind of might look like the same thing and then so it won't matter. So he was talking about, he's talking about the process of being up on stage, being up on stage and, and inviting people up to be hypnotized. So we're kind of in the middle of the conversation. We're starting at around four minutes. And he says here. Intimidated and, but for the two thousand. Other times I can tell they're sort of half into it and they're just a bit intimidated. Other and, times I can tell they're kind of half into it and intimidated. Kind of half into it, kind of half into it, kind of half into it means half interested, half invested not really sure, not really, as he says, committed, right? To be half into something means like you're not fully interested <laughs> in it, right? So let's listen to that again and continue. Honest response. Other times I can tell they're sort of half into it and they're just a bit intimidated and but for the 2,000 people looking, that might look, it kind of might look like the same thing, and then so it won't matter. That, so how does that, exactly does that work? The handshake induction. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's a... Uh... He's talking about a handshake induction. This is, I guess, a hypnosis, you know, hypnotist term. Handshake induction. They come up on stage, and he's going to describe 
the handshake induction, which he calls it. It's not very important for your conversation <laughs> skills. You don't have to know handshake induction, but uh, it's important for the context of this video. Thing and then so it won't matter. So how does that exactly does that work? The handshake induction. Yeah. Okay, well, it's it's a uh, <laughs> I take no responsibility for explaining this to your tens of millions of listeners and viewers. Um, but uh, it's it's your your he in... looks uncomfortable sharing this. You know, there's a magician, a magician's code where you're not supposed to reveal the secrets, right? But he's going to. Interrupting a an automatic process, right? This is the this is the key to it. It was made popular by um, made popular by I guess Richard Bandler, who's the guy behind NLP and so on. Um, I don't know if he kind of created this thing, but said a couple of things. It was made popular by. It was made popular by you grammar enthusiasts. You know that that's the passive voice. It was made popular by. This man, Richard Branson, or Richard Brand, uh, and NLP, he was talking about. NLP. And I had to look this up too. NLP, I looked it up, and it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is your automatic programming, your automatic responses. He said NLP for the context of the conversation but made popular by, may, it was made popular by this man. This is the, this is the key to it. It was made popular by, um, made popular by, I guess, Richard Bandler, who's the guy behind NLP and so on. Um, I don't know if he kind of created this thing, but perhaps, uh, perhaps Ericsson did before him. I don't know. Anyway, you, you, you take an automatic process and you interrupt it in the middle. So like when you're shaking hands with somebody, it's a, such a familiar process that when you start, you're not thinking, okay, I'm going to grip this person's hand now, and I'm going to move my hand up and down with them a few times, then I'll take my hand away. You just kind of do it automatically. Um, and there's some... You just kind of do it automatically. So let's take a couple parts from this. And you interrupt it in the middle. So I don't know. Anyway, you, you, you take an automatic process. You take an automatic process. He said automatic process, right? But you take an automatic process. And you interrupt it in the middle. So like when you're so like, so like when you're shaking hands, so like, so like, so like when you're shaking hands, that's a good replacement fluency builder for, for example, right? So like, so like when you're shaking hands, for example, when you're shaking hands, so you don't have to always say, for example, for example, for example, for example, for example, right? You don't have to say that. You can replace for example with so like, so like, so like when you're shaking hands. Right. You, you, you take an automatic process and you interrupt it in the middle. So like when you're shaking hands with somebody, it's a, such a familiar process that when you start, you're not thinking, okay, I'm going to grip this person's hand now, and I'm going to move my hand up and down with them a few times, then I'll take my hand away. You just kind of do it automatically. Um, and there's something about interrupting that that leaves people f really flummoxed and, and bewildered because they're really, it really caught off guard. Like if you imagine... There's something about interrupting that process. There's something about, there's something about interrupting there's something about ing there's something about doing this that and then an effect right there's something about there's something about doing this that there's something about this cause that effect there's something about this cause that effect it's something that you don't have you don't know exactly what the cause is then you can say there's something about this process that does something, does some effect or has some effect. And he, it leaves them flummoxed, 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 
flummoxed means like confused and bewildered and uh, just caught off guard, as he said too, to be caught off guard, to be caught off guard. Now go back, you can hit the back button, go back, and I'm going to play it now, and then go back and listen to him and shadow and repeat after him as he says this. It can be caught off guard. To be caught off guard means to be surprised and you don't know how to respond, right? To be caught off guard. Up and down with them a few times, then I'll take my hand away. You just kind of do it automatically. Um, and there's something about interrupting that that leaves people really flummoxed and, and bewildered because they're really really caught off guard. Like if you imagine somebody comes up to you in the street. So for shadowing practice, you would go back and say, really flummoxed and, and bewildered because they're really really caught off guard. Like if you imagine really somebody comes up to you in the street. Right, that's how we would shadow and they're really caught off guard. And then I would go back again. Really flummoxed and, and bewildered because they're really really caught off guard. Like if you imagine. Like you imagine, again, another replacement for, for example. Like you imagine, and then he's going to go into an example. Somebody comes up really flummoxed and, and bewildered because they're really, really caught off guard. Like if you imagine somebody comes up to you in the street and says, it's not half past seven. You know, your reaction isn't to go, yeah, yeah, I know, it's uh, 20 past nine. Your reaction is, is a sort of, you, you think like you've missed something, like you're trying to make sense of it. It's a strange... Uh, kind of puts you on the back foot and at that point if you t if you've got somebody who's kind of puts you on the back foot kind of puts you on the back foot let's listen again uh kind of puts you on the back foot kind of puts you on the back foot it's not really a common expression but to get the idea it kind of puts you on the back foot means it it makes you step back that's another that's another way, maybe a more common way to say that. It makes you step back, meaning it makes you pause. It makes you stop. It catches you off guard. You see how all the, it, it's the same way or different ways of saying the same thing. Like you're trying to make sense of it. It's a strange... Uh kind of puts you on the back foot and at that point if you t if you've got somebody who's fairly suggestible and people coming up on stage it's such an odd moment for them anyway they're naturally very suggestible that a clear instruction to sleep or whatever you want to give them tends to be taken very deeply and very often then you'll see I'll shake hands and I'll I'll break the pattern of the handshake so I'll I'll often take their hand and lift it up to their face and say sleep and show them their hand like that and they just look. sleep and well it's not sleep but it's a kind <laughs> they... of um it looks like i mean they they'll do anything from eyes closed head drops down to just drop like a like a dead weight on the floor you know what i found this most interesting actually was um like a plant you know what i found that's most interesting actually there's a lot of there are a lot of fluency builders in there a dead weight on the floor you know what i found this most interesting actually was um, you know what I found that was most interesting, actually? There are so many fluency builders just in that one little expression. You know what I found that was most interesting, actually? Drops down to just drop like a, like a dead weight on the floor. You know what I found this most interesting, actually, was um, like applying this in slightly more useful everyday situations was as a sort of... Um, like a self-defense technique. I was walking uh, between, so I was like, must have been like 20 or something, and I was at a magic convention, and I was walking from one hotel to another, and I'm dressed in like a three-piece velvet suit. I was this skinny British, like I might, might as well have, you know, punch me in the throat, tattooed across my face. And I might as well have punch me in the throat, tattooed on my face. I might as well have I might as well have, I might as well have, go back and listen to that one again and go back and shadow that one. I'm going to play it again, but I might as well have had punch me in the face. I might as well meaning it was just as good as having punch me in the face tattooed, right? Uh, having this type of dress, having this type of clothes on, going to a magic convention at 20 years old, 
it was just as good. It was the same as. I might as well have means it was the same as. I might as well have. It was the same as. Those kind of mean the same thing. As this skinny British, like I might, might as well have, you know, punched me in the throat, tattooed across my face. And this guy comes up and he's like, a, he's drunk. It's about three in the morning. Drunk, aggressive, is with his girlfriend, clearly looking for a fight. And uh, he sort of, he comes up to me and he says, what, what, are you, what are you fucking looking at? What are you looking at? And because I'd spoken about this, how to deal with this sort of thing, but had never found myself in this situation, I kind of had it all mentally rehearsed. So I said to him, I said, the wall outside my house isn't four foot high. And I guess there's an equivalent to this with sort of adrenaline dump, I think it's called in, uh, in martial arts, but there's a, it, it just like, he's got all this adrenaline and then a thing like that from me, which is just out of context. Like it makes sense. I'm not like talking gibberish. It makes right. sense, but it's just out of context. Right. So now some- I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking gibberish. I'm not talking gibberish. Gibber talking gibberish is like nonsense, which is another word that might be new. Nonsense. Talking gibberish is talking <laughs> You know, like like gibberish. It doesn't make any there's no words, right? So I'm not talking gibberish. It makes sense. It's just out of context. Context. Like it makes sense. I'm not like talking gibberish. It makes right. sense, but it's just out of context. Right. So now suddenly he's thinking, well, I've what? I've missed something. So now he he was sort of he went what? And I said, and the, his girlfriend walked off. And I said, the the wall outside my house isn't four foot high. I spent some time in Spain. The walls there were very high, but if you look at the ones here, they're, they're tiny. They're nothing. And then he just sort of broke down. He sort of went, whoa. And uh, he started crying. Well, you know, he, no, it wasn't quite crying, but it was just, it was like all the adrenaline and everything just, just flooded out of him. And he sat down <laughs> and I end up sitting next to him on the, uh, like, you know, on the. Everything, all the adrenaline and everything sort of flooded out of him. He's a fantastic speaker. If you can follow this, I recommend going and watching the original video because he's such a good communicator his storytelling skills his, his the terms that he uses to paint a picture fantastic storytelling if you want me to do an entire break down this entire video let me know below and if there's enough demand I'll do it but what a fantastic the adrenaline just flooded out of him so a flood is when water it rains so much and the water comes up and there's water and it rises right then it's flooding imagine in this room water comes up to here right the room is flooded flooded a flood flood can be a verb or a noun right so flooded the room is flooded came flooding out of him. No, it wasn't quite crying, but it was just, it was like all the adrenaline and everything just, just flooded out of him. And he sat down and I end up sitting next to him on the, uh, like, you know, on the roadside, um, asking him, you know, so what I was, the plan was I was going to try and stick his feet to the floor and I had his whole plan, but he just kind of collapsed and sat down. You so I, so stick I, his feet to the I was floor stick his feet, Yeah, that was because I knew it'd be like this highly <laughs> suggestible state. And like either way, the, the <sighs> moment of aggression had <sighs> passed. But I ended up, ended up weirdly sitting with him, asking him what had happened that evening. And his girlfriend, had, I think she'd bottled somebody or something horrible had happened. Oh, Jesus. So he'd got out with all this aggression. But it's a, it's a good one, isn't it? If you just have like a... Girlfriend, but I don't know what bottling somebody means. So if you're wondering what that is, I don't know either. But I'd imagine, based on his his uh, body language, to bottle somebody is to take a bottle, break it, and stab somebody or hit somebody with it. Either way, really. Somebody or something horrible had happened. Oh Jesus! So he'd got out with all this aggression. But it's a it's a good one, isn't it? By the way. Notice in conversation, these are great to study too, because in conversation you hear Joe Rogan's, right? His interaction. Let's go back. Uh, well, first here he said, 
he, she bottled somebody. Oh, jeez. I think she'd bottled somebody or something horrible had happened. Oh, Jesus. So he'd gone out with all this aggression. Oh, jeez. Or you could say, oh, Jesus. But be careful because if some people are very religious, it could be offensive. Jesus? Yeah, that was the... I had his whole plan. But he just... And notice Joe Rogan's conversation, his way of being engaged in the conversation. This is part of conversation that is very important to study that a lot of people don't study. It's how to respond, right? How to respond when somebody says something. So listen to Joe Rogan. Darren Brown is telling the story and listen to how Joe Rogan is, is responding and interacting. Asking him, you know, to him on the, uh, just flooded out of him and he sat down and I end up sitting next to him on the, uh, like, you know, on the roadside. Um, asking him you know so what i was the plan was i was going to try and stick his feet to the floor and i had his whole plan but he just kind of collapsed and sat down so i stick his feet yeah that was because i knew it'd be like <laughs> he just just one little question you were gonna just kind of confirming right letting him know you're in the conversation and confirming right you were gonna stick his floor feet to the floor with hypnosis <laughs> right uh, and let's go back to another place when Joe Rogan gave some, uh, <laughs> there's a lot, if you just go back, you see a lot of interesting faces. You see how animated Darren Brown is. <laughs> this is a great exercise too, right? My house isn't four foot high. I spent some time in Spain. The walls there were very high, but if you look at the ones here, they're, they're tiny, they're nothing. And then he just sort of broke down. He sort of went, whoa. And uh, he started crying. Well, you know Another confirmation, right? He started crying. He started crying. He, no, it wasn't quite crying, but it was just, it was like all the adrenaline and everything just, just flooded out of him. And he sat down <laughs> and I end up sitting next to him on the, uh, like, you know, on the roadside. Um, Asking him, you know, so what I was the plan was I was going to try and stick his feet to the floor, and I had his whole plan, but he just kind of collapsed and sat down. You so I stick so I, his feet to the floor. With hypnosis? His feet, yeah, that was because I knew it'd be like this highly <laughs> suggestible state, and like either way, the, the moment of aggression <sighs> had passed. But I ended up ended up weirdly sitting with him, asking him what had happened that evening, and his girlfriend, had, I think she'd bottled somebody or something horrible had happened. Oh Jesus! So he'd gone out with all this aggression. But it's a it's a good one, isn't it? If you just have like um, it could be just a song lyric or just some some weird kind of thing that you can just go into in, in those situations. I mean, if someone's running at you with a knife, it's a bit difficult, but you just, you, you're kind of strangely taking control of a situation. Otherwise, what are you gonna do? If they say, what are you looking at? Otherwise, what are you gonna do? Otherwise, what are you gonna do? If they say, what are you looking at? Otherwise, like in the other way, if you don't do this, otherwise, otherwise, what are you gonna do? A good connector. Right? A good connector. Otherwise, what are you going to do? The other side, if not... Kind of strangely taking control of a situation. Otherwise, what are you going to do? If they say, what are you looking at? You, you can't... You, there's no way you can answer that without being on the back foot. So it just right. kind of nicely kind of inverts the situation and puts them on the back foot. Which, anyway, it worked. It was, uh, it was kind of fun. Isn't there like a process required to hypnotize someone? You could just do it that way and say, just talk them through some sort of a program that makes them think their foot is stuck to the floor. And I just want to, I was going to stop there. I wanted to note this, how there was a break. Darren Brown finished his story. And these are called follow-up questions, right? He's following up to get more information more story from the other person. A fantastic uh, conversation builder, a conversation tool, follow-up questions. You don't want to be annoying with these, but they're a great, great way to continue a conversation and be engaged. Isn't there like a process required to hypnotize someone? You could just do it that way and say, just talk them through some sort of a program that makes them think their foot is stuck to the floor. I, it, it, it all depends on the moment. I had, I used to hypnotize people in my, um, in my room when I was a student, right? So I was the guy that did hypnosis. Right. So I'd have people coming, you know, regularly coming to, to try it out. And, um, 
I was the guy for hypnosis. Um, so I don't want to get too long with this video. I stopped here. We started around four minutes. We're stopping here at nine minutes, 24. I'm going to put this video in the description box below. So as a recap, uh, use these to tell stories. Use these to build your conversation skills. Uh, let me know below how, um, how the audio is with just the phone microphone. If it's okay, I'll just use that if it's okay for you. Uh, and also, if you know, if you have any experience with these, let me know how to use them without going crazy. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, let somebody else know about these videos so they can improve their conversation skills too, their English communication skills, and find out something interesting. And after this video, after you've practiced, I recommend go below, go to the original video, and see how much you can follow just by yourself. All right. Thanks for watching. Keep teaching. Keep learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.